This is Real Talk. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We celebrate love. My guests will get real on their unique love stories from dealing with interracial issues, cultural differences, and also long distance relationships. Welcome to Real Talk. Remember tonight, you can join the conversation via the hashtag hash Real Talk with Tamima on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. We are spotlighting and talking about unique love. So my guests will be sharing their stories, starting with uh, Daniel Mudui and Suzanne Mudui. They are a married couple and they have a very interesting love story. Welcome to the show, guys. So maybe let me start with ladies first, Susan. So my producers told me that apparently when you and Daniel met, Within four hours, he had proposed to you. Yes. Tell us about that day. <laughs> okay, we went, we first met when we were going to work. I had met his, his sister earlier. So Daniel got my number from his sister. So you had never met? No. So one day when he, he, he didn't have anyone to go with, as staff. So we went with him. First thing when we got there, he asked me, are you married? And I said, no. Later I found him sitting on the sitting room watching. We started talking and he told me, tell me about yourself, about your career and all that. And then I told him uh, about my career. I'm a chef. Then later, next day, as we were cooking, I was in another room and he was in another room. He came and told me, I want to marry you. And that's how it started. So Daniel, tell us, how did you move from, you just met the beautiful girl, other guys would actually be, give me your number, let's go for lunch, let's go for dinner. But for you it was, can, we, can you be my wife? What prompted you? To get, to get to the finish line. One of the key things of a born again person is there is help inside of you. You can always consult. The only thing is how to learn to hear. So I had trained myself to hear God for on several occasions. So I had tried this thing for long. I've, I always live by the basis of the word of God. So uh, when I look at the manual, which is the Bible, it, it gives me guidance on anything. Man, Bible is a manual of life. So. When it came to a time that I, I knew I wanted to marry, I had first to try God on hearing him on other small issues like doing a menu and, or talking to hiring staff or small things as, as an executive chef in big hotels. So he, Holy Spirit had already helped me in small details that I already knew that I can trust him on big time issues. The norm is Sasha, I'm supposed to court her, but uh, coating can, it's good, yeah? You can get a lot of things, but I can also hide things that are key. I've gone on dates that the lady transforms me to a case study. He, <laughs> he knows me. Uh, he answers exactly what I want to hear. So right. I had shifted that way of living to a higher way of living when you know God and you're born again. It's the only advantage here on earth. Yes, heaven is there, but here the most important thing is knowing how to utilize him now for things that matter for me now. So what about her stood out? I had written, only recently, I took a list of 13 points of the wife that I wanted. But on that material day when I was serving, I, there was nothing that stood out. The Holy Ghost said, this is a lady. And I went to her and I said, Susan, I, I want to marry you. And she said, oh my God. Oh, she's referring to the same person that I'm referring to. Susan, so is that what you meant when you said, oh my God? <laughs> Amma, you were like, you were like, this guy is coming to me in a mystery. I was shocked because before we went for that job, that morning, I woke up and I started praying. And God talked to me and said, call unto me and I will answer you. I will show you great and hidden things that you know not of. And when he said, Will you marry me? I was like, you have just answered me. But I couldn't say anything. Oh, you couldn't tell him that? Yeah. <laughs> so after 24 hours, he proposes, did you say yes then? No, I just said, oh my God. And then later, after three days, that is when I said yes. 
after three days of meeting him, yeah, and I working have. together. Yes. And uh, at that point, what, what was your, because your you mentioned your sister. So was mm -hmm. your sister then aware that you've just met her friend and you've proposed? My sister was not aware. After the job that we did on that catering, I didn't meet her again until I had my yes. But my, her yes was not the issue. I already knew this is a deal. It's a done deal. I, I, I. <laughs> <laughs> This done deal on your end, eh? mm -hmm. because you've met a man, three days later, you're saying, yes, I'll be your wife. So on your end, I'm sure when you, when you mentioned it to your family, they must have had a reaction. Yes. They didn't have any issue at first, but my mom had that issue of, no, this is too fast. But I told, I told my mom, I heard from God. And I think when you hear from the Holy Spirit, that is the right thing. So, so three days after meeting, you guys were engaged, and mm -hmm. uh, how you got married after a couple of months. Yes. And how long have you been married for now? Around na ten months now. Around ten months. So, how yeah. is married life? For me, it's good, and I can say, I have learned a lot because one thing I was telling God, I would like, I'm also born again. I would like a man who is more spiritual than me, a little bit. I can learn from him. What about you, Daniel? How is, how is marriage? As a caterer, I meet, I work with many couples and many marriages. And there's one thing I never wanted to have, a functional marriage. Marriage that is just working. I wanted something that I'm helped of God because when he, he created Adam, he placed him him in Eden. Eden means pleasure. At home is basically holiday. Like the Bible says, uh, wash your wife with the words of God, just like Jesus wooed me to be born again. Sometimes you come home and you're tired. And guys that are learned, they'll tell you, you need to help your wife or study uh, a love language and everything. But that can be difficult for a, tough chef, for a chef that has been working for 16 hours. But I rely on the Holy Ghost to tell me what to do. Maybe he guide me, today don't help in the cooking, just hold the baby. When I put the burden off my chest, then the, I'm not under pressure to perform. It's not a performance. Let God run the show. You will enjoy, you'll be like a baby. Okay, I want to introduce our expert tonight. I have Benjamin Zulu. He is a lawyer and counseling psychologist at Nisikize. If I had to ask you, Benjamin, the one thing that I caught from both of them is that it's, deep, it's a deeply spiritual connection. But we know that sometimes in the real world, it's not as easy as that yeah. when it comes to picking somebody to settle down with yeah. in real life. Yeah. Um, thank you, Tamima. One, I think there's a principle underlying which they're not putting in straight words but they are all of us, all of them talking about it. He mentioned the word, it's called conviction. It's not the period of time you have known a person. It's how long it takes you to have conviction. She has called it inner peace. He called it assurance by a higher person. They have a lot of spiritual language, but psychologically they are saying, it, you can stay with a person 10 years and you still have nagging doubts whether they're the right person. You can see a person, I, I have cases now, people saw a person, they never met, just went through their profile on social media, said, this person, shall marry me. And then you go, he has not told you what, what many guys tell me. The lady should have answered no. Many ladies are automatically say no, because no is self-defensive. I'm not yes. committing, I don't know you, who are you? Not all ladies say no, they mean I don't want you. They mean I don't know you, I need more time. So many people say yes after five no's. So they say, for me, it's not the period of time. It's how long did it get you to be convinced, conviction, that I can try this? And I'm sure even with that, today sitting here, you'll admit to us, you still face some of the challenges that newlywed couples face. And you both have the conviction that this is the person that I should be with, which makes it easier for you to deal with the issues when they arise. There are things that arise. What I do is that I say, this is what I think we should do. And I don't force that. I let the Holy Ghost enforce it in our heart. So the next time we are talking about the same issue, she will say, like, I thought you are right. Or if I'm wrong, because most of the times I'm wrong as a chef, I think I've known it all. <laughs> so, and you're both chefs, uh, yeah, so you she, work together. Yeah, she's uh, <laughs> baker, she's more strong in baking and, 
I'm doing SOSI and everything and managing the whole thing. So we disagree on many issues, but that has nothing to do with our marriage. And it's quick, if you have done it professionally, there are things people you don't agree on at work. The same, I take it the same way at home. If we don't agree at work, that should not affect the relationship that we have between me and you. What about for you, Sue? How much should I call you, Bay? <laughs> <laughs> when I decided I said yes, it was m what I said. I meant it. He is much different from me because he talks a lot and I'm a bit quiet. So, the, I, actually there are some things I came to see when we were already married, but I didn't let that one, they let them both alone.